Welcome to LeetCode's Blind Create 75, where I'll be solving the top 75 LeetCode questions. This question is called minimum window substring. Here's the question. Given two strings S and T, return the minimum window in S, which will contain all the characters in T. If there is no such window in S that covers all the characters in T, return the empty string. Note that there is that if there is such a window, it is guaranteed that there will always be only one unique minimum window. So that's good. We don't need to worry about multiple uh, same answers. Okay, so how would we go about solving this in the naive way? Well, if we were to just do this naively, we could calculate every single substring inside of our string and check to see if all those characters exist in T. And if it's less than, we can store the maximum length somewhere. And if that length of that is less than the max length, we will update our max length and then update our uh, window to be that substring. So let's first start with that solution, see if we can get that working. Uh, what I'll need to do is create a lookup object and this will be a counter for T. And this will allow us to check to see if all the characters in our window exist in the lookup as well as the counts are the same. So I make sure to initialize that. I'll also initialize the max length, which will just be the, I'll just make it a start off with the max value in Python, and also store the output, which is going to be an empty string. So if I want to calculate every single substring, I will have to do it inside of a for loop, right? So I'll start with for end in range of, uh, we'll call it the length of s. And this will just be s. We'll say for start in range of n. Uh, let's first start off by creating a temp object, and this will be a counter with the string from the start to the end. Now make sure to add a 1 here uh, so that we take care of that last character. And what we'll do, we'll write a helper method to check to see if all the characters inside of this substring exist in T. Now we already have a lookup for that, so what I can do is write a helper, and I'll pass in some counter object, and we'll say for the key value items in lookup, Uh, what we'll have to do is make sure that everything in T exists in this A. So if key not in A or the value of, um, let's see, A K is less than our value here, then we can return a false immediately. Uh, otherwise, if we're able to get through this whole loop, make sure that all the characters in T exist in A and the counts are uh, either the the same or greater, then we can return a true here. Okay, so what we'll do is say if helper pass in the temp object. So if all the characters in temp exist in T, then we will check to see if our max length, uh, so the max length if we can use our start and end, we'll say n minus start. If this is less than the max that we've stored, let's update our max and we'll update our output to equal and then plus one. And after that, we should have calculated every single substream. We can return our output here. So this would work, um, and it's perfectly fine, but this would not get accepted. This would reach a time limit exception. And the reason for that is, um, you know, best case scenario, this is an n squared solution. Technically with this part here, that adds some more, but you know, best case is n squared. So that's not very good. We want to try to see if we can solve it in O of n time. Now, how could we do that? Well, if we want to do that, we can't use a nested loop. Um, really, the only technique here would be to use a sliding window. And they kind of give you the hint inside of the question itself. It says minimum window. So we kind of can intuit there that probably some sort of sliding window solution would be possible. Now, how could we do that here? Well, why don't we have two pointers, right? And we will first have the end pointer go to the point where we have every single character in T inside of this substring. So we'll start with this end pointer and we'll say A is here, okay, B, and now C. So that completes everything, right? Now we will slide our first pointer to the point where we no longer contain all of the T's inside of the substring. So here immediately, once we pass our A, uh, we no longer contain A, B, C inside here, right? So now we move our end pointer up to the point where we find another A. So this is going to be pretty far, it goes all the way down here. So this would be the next window with both all of ABC. Now we'll get our first pointer and move that down until we don't have everything. First it gets this B here, 
Uh, but notice that we have another B, right? So we can actually move it ahead up until the C. Uh, once we pass the C though, now we no longer have all of ABC. So now move our end pointer, that goes all the way to the end, to the C here, so this goes all the way down here. And finally move our um, start pointer all the way to the point where we no longer contain everything, and that goes all the way down to here. So um, the shortest character we can see would be here with bank, and we could store that using the same sort of approach where we store the max length, and if that's less than what we had before, then we'll store our output. Okay, so um, keep this in mind. It's a little tricky, but we can get there. Uh, what we'll do is first have a start and end pointer of side of zero, and we'll actually also um, have to store some sort of count. And what this will do is count up the number of characters inside of our lookup. Because we want to make sure we account for all the characters inside of our lookup, and we'll keep track of that using this count here. Uh, once we get to a point where we've exhausted all the characters inside of T, then this count will decrease. So what we'll do is we'll have a while loop. We'll say while the end is less than s. And we'll have two while loops here. First for the end pointer and one for the start pointer. So while this end is also less than s uh, and count does not equal zero because we want to get our end pointer all the way to the point that we um, count has been completely exhausted. So to do that, we'll first check to see, look, is s of end is it in our lookup? And if it is, what do we want to do? Well, first we want to decrease our S lookup uh, by one. We'll just decrease that. Now, if this lookup here, if this equals zero, then we know we can decrease our count. So we want to go up to the point where um, this now equals zero. So now we can decrease our counter by, by one. Once we've exhausted all our accounts, that means we've gotten all the characters in T, uh, as well as the number of them, then we want to move our start pointer, right? So now we want to move our start pointer. Um, so while start is less than end, and count while the count equals zero, because we want to get up to the point where this count is no longer zero. Uh, before we do that, though, let's make sure to store our output, because right at this point, this substring contains all the characters in T. Uh, so if end minus start is less than max. Let's first update our max to be n minus start, and we'll store output to equal uh, the s of, let's see, um, start n plus one. Okay, so we gotta make sure we do that. And second thing we wanna do is check to see, look, if s of start, if this is in lookup, then we will increase our lookup by one. And one thing to note is technically we could make this value less than zero. Like we might have decreased our count, but we might continue to go down zero, zero, zero. So we want to make sure that this hits past zero first, right? So if, let's see, lookup dot s dot start, if it's greater than zero, once it hits that, then we can increase our count. Now we have this, um, and I believe that might be it. We just return our output after that because we store that here. Um, and yeah, let's see if this works. Uh oh, let's see. What did I do? Start less than end. Okay, so I, I messed something up. Oh, of course. Of course, I don't know why I keep doing this. I need to increase our end pointer by one here and increase our start pointer by one. Otherwise, we'll never follow the loop. Uh, so let's make sure that I got that. Let's do this. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead and submit this. Got the wrong answer. Hmm. This might be less than or equal to. Let's see if that works.
Okay, so that still doesn't work. Um, I'm missing something up here. But I'm not sure what. Uh, could this be it? Let's see, am I missing something up? Okay, I, I, I don't know if this, that's right, but let's see here. That is right. Uh, I guess I messed that up there. Um, yeah, because when I do nested for loops, that's going to take care of that plus one on its own, but this will not, so I need to, I don't need to do, do a plus one. Okay, so that does work. Um, sorry for that little stumble there. But hopefully, you know, you get the basic idea. This is a sliding window where we're going to move our end pointer, then move our start pointer, and that's going to end up becoming an O of N time complexity. All right, so I hope that helps. Um, yeah, thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing. <laughs>